Hey everybody, it's Ann Beebe. Today is Monday, April 20th, 2020. I'm Barb Hammer. I haven't done for a video for a couple of weeks and I'm sorry about that. I've gotten really overwhelmed with things uh, as a lot of people are um, over this uh, coronavirus outbreak and uh, psychological operation, it seems. Um, so, um, uh, I've also had some software problems. I am using um, some old software that I used until last year when I was starting to have issues and I had to switch. So I'm back to my old software because the uh, the software that I have been using lately it acted up and it's not it's a software extension on my browser and for some reason that doesn't want to work <laughs> and I tried to make a video yesterday and it seemed it didn't record. Uh, anyway, so I'm still stuck in my uh, flood damage department and the workers have not been able to do any work because they've been told, I guess, not to work in apartments where there are people still living. And so I still have no bathroom sink, uh, no linoleum, no vanity, no mirror in the bathroom and um, still haven't moved things. We had to move things, clear things out of the bathroom and uh, this room and haven't moved things back and we're looking for another place. So it's an um, ongoing sad saga. Anyway, uh, so I've been watching the coronavirus situation and I call it the mother of all regime changes because that seems to be what's going on. They're trying to demonize China. Uh, it's uh, the old Cold War uh, scaremongering about China and uh, it's very suspicious how everything's being orchestrated for corporations and vaccines and shutting every bit, everybody down and uh, big bailouts for corporations. All very suspicious. Um, I'm pretty sure the virus did come in from the U.S. It seems like the outbreak started in the U.S. last year, and I've talked about that before. But today I want to talk about something I started to see over the weekend uh, yesterday. Um, so there was a mass shooting in Nova Scotia, uh, Canada. Um, and this is the biggest mass shooting in modern history. And it um, exceeded the, the, before this, the biggest, uh, death toll in a mass shooting in Canada was the um, shooting at the Ecole Polytechnique in Montreal in 1989. And I think there were 14 people killed then, mainly women or all women, I'm not sure. They were being targeted apparently and it's commemorated every year. So, um, so far the death toll in this Nova Scotia shooting is 19, including the shooter, a dead patsy, I think, uh, get into that, but, um, um, yeah, 19, but they think the death toll, death toll could rise because, um, I think three homes were burned, so they don't know if there's some victims that are in the remains of those homes, um, I, when I was first looking at this yesterday, I instantly got suspicious. The story didn't seem to add up. Um, and then they seem to be patching together a story, a motive. Um, so, um, so in the midst of this virus lockdown, so what happened there, there was a lockdown within a lockdown. Um, and it seems to be, I've kind of talked about uh, the big virus is fear. So it's more scaremongering. Um, they got to keep everybody scared, paralyzed, shut down. And this is yet another one. And they're also talking, of course, in Canada, there are very strict gun control laws in Canada. And yet they still keep saying, oh, we need yet even stricter gun control laws in Canada. Um, uh, anyway, 
Um, so I have, uh, this is not really uh, the kind of thing that I look into normally, but um, I, I started learning about these possibly false flag events, gladio events, um, where um, the authorities, uh, the ruling class has to keep people um, terrorized. Um, so I'm suspicious that the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, they do not have a good reputation at all in Canada, even though it seems to be <laughs> white people in Canada love the RCMP. I mean, not all. Uh, thinking people, uh, they know the history of the RCMP. Uh, <laughs> indigenous people, on the other hand, do not, they're not big fans of the RCMP. They have not, have not been treated very well at all. Um, so the RCMP, they are known for uh, creating false flag events um, that are blamed on a crazy person or terrorists. So I have talked about the October crisis in 1970, and I'm pretty sure that was a false flag event. And I've talked about that a couple of times on the anniversary on uh, Canada for Canada Day. I talk about that, I think. Um, so that was blamed on Quebec separatist terrorist, but I'm pretty sure it was an RCMP operation. Um, if you look into it, uh, and it was kind of, uh, it's been referred to as sort of a dress rehearsal for 9-11. And this is another kind of, uh, the virus outbreak is another 9-11 type event. Um, uh, so it's interesting. This is like a false flag within a false flag. Anyway, I want to show you geographically where we're talking about. So uh, here's North America to get acquainted. So Nova Scotia is here in uh, the community where this happened. It's called Porta Peak. And it's sort of a distortion. Um, it's a distortion of uh, the French word for uh, porcupine. So this is uh, in the area of Acadia, French speaking part of Canada. So the word for uh, porcupine in French is porcupine, peak porc peak a porta peak So this is porta peak And this is where the shooting, shootings, the events took place. It started here. So I noticed, um, uh, actually, let's look at the timeline here. I want to play this because it's very, it's very important to look at the timeline and what they say happened. So anyway, I'm going to play this. Um, I can't, this software won't record the sound, but it's mostly, uh, uh, there's, uh, text. So, I will play this. Uh, yeah, so here. So, yeah, so um, 11.30 on Saturday. It started uh, Saturday, April 18th, 11.30, um, before midnight. And uh, I have seen reports that it may have started uh late afternoon and maybe 10 o'clock anyway. So this was the first indication that there was trouble. Um, the RCMP of Nova Scotia reported about these firearms complaints on um, this area, Port Porta Peak Beach Road, Bayshore Road and Five Hazard Road. I looked up these locations. So I, the story is that there were three houses set on fire. So I guess I'm assuming I'm assuming the house fires were maybe in this, all in this area. Um, so Porta Peak, uh, Porta Peak Beach Road. This is Porta Peak Beach Road here. And then the other, yeah. So this, that road there, Porta Peak Beach Road. And then over here is Bayshore Road. And this is, um, 
five houses road. That's the other. So is this area in Porta Peak where the trouble started? And I believe um, so. The, the shooter, the alleged shooter, is um, his name is Gabriel Gabriel Wartman. Gabriel Wartman, and I think his uh, he um, owns two homes. This is probably more like a cottage. Um, so in Canada, a lot of people in the cities, they will have like a, you know, the people <laughs> are fairly affluent. Uh, they will often have a cabin, a cottage um, outside of the city where they go for the weekends or, you know, for, to relax. Anyway, so this is where the trouble started. And go back to that timeline. So uh, RCMP in Nova Scotia say they are responding to a firearms complaint in the small rural town of Porta Peak. And that's Saturday at 1130. And then, and they told people to avoid the area and lock their doors. I even saw reports where they told people even to hide, hide in their basements. Um, so it really was, you know, people were being, were stuck at home anyway, but they were telling them to lock their doors, lock, really lock down, <laughs> go into lockdown. Um, and the officers arrive at the scene to find multiple casualties, both inside and outside of the home, but the shooter is gone. So this part is where there's a, so this is, that is, this is a Porta Peak, Porta Peak uh, Beach Road going down. So they blocked off and the officer's wearing a mask. He's not in uniform. And these are RCMP vehicles. And this is a spokesman. The sound, I can't record sound from videos with this uh, software, but it doesn't really matter. He's just sort of explaining what was already so police secured the area and began a search that lasted through the night and into the morning so here's the porta peak beach road sign uh, and then porta peak home to about a hundred year-round residents was flooded with many police units emergency response teams helicopters and police dog services so um they uh, had a lot of personnel looking for this guy, this one guy overnight. And RCMP say they are still, oh, say so this is Sunday. So, so they're supposedly looking for him through the night and he's on this rampage. Um, so uh, Sunday at 8 a.m., they say, the RCMP say, they are still in the scene and describe the investigation as an active, active shooter situation. They tell residents to stay in their homes. Lockdown. Lockdown. Now, this situation um, I uh, is reminiscent, too, of... Uh, the Boston Marathon bombing, when they shut down um, uh, Bo the Bo Boston and looking for one of the Sarnaya brothers. Um, uh, yeah, and that, well, incidentally, uh, Boston Marathon bombing, that was on April 15th. So this is the 18th and 19th. A couple of other interesting anniversaries. Uh, there's the Oklahoma City bombing which was on April 9th, the anniversary, April 19th. Um, Columbine, April uh, 20th, April, yeah, April 20th in Waco, the Waco uh, Columbine High School shooting in Colorado in 1999. That was on April 19th or 20th. And then the Waco, um, uh, Waco, Texas, when uh, the, uh, uh, it was a Branch Davidian, compound was set on fire and all those people were killed and that was uh on the 20th april 20th so and that's connected to the oklahoma city bombing supposedly uh but these are all false flag attacks 
yeah. So this is the season of false flag attacks, apparently. Anyway, so I'll keep playing this. So this was a suspect identified, uh, 51-year-old Gabriel, Gabriel Wardman, um, identified as a suspected gunman and released his picture. You know, he looks like a pleasant guy. And, and, um, so later they said that he may be wearing an RCMP uniform and be driving what appears to be an RCMP vehicle. How convenient. Okay. So, um, victims, they wouldn't know they would see RCMP, uh, and not suspect any problems seeing someone and that's another problem I have with this is that uh, if the RCMP kill, if they, um, if they carried out these killings, you know, if there are any witnesses that say, oh, we saw RCMP and they'd say, oh, that was Gabriel, that was Gabriel. Okay, that's the problem I have with this whole story. That's one of many problems I have with this story. And Yeah, so that's, and then later that morning, they say he's in the central Onslow and Deaver areas, and they urge people to stay inside and avoid the area. So uh, those areas are, uh, I have located these. Ah, yeah, Deaver and, yeah, Onslow, so this area. So... He went from, so allegedly, he went from this area to this area. Um, oops, that's not it. Okay. And then he was last seen traveling southbound on Highway 102 toward Halifax from the Brookfield area. I'm not sure. I don't think I saw. Um, Oh, there's, on, yeah, there's on, on slow and Beaver. Um, so this is 102. Um, so let me zoom out here. Uh, so he was, uh, he had gone along here supposedly and he was headed down 102. Uh, there's Brookfield. Okay. There's Brookfield. So he was headed south toward Halifax. I want to show you where Halifax is. Um, so he... So way down here, Halifax. So he had another home, uh, his business, and he had a, his home in Dartmouth, and he had this cottage, I guess. So he was headed down this direction. So 1120, um, yeah, so he torched that, uh, car that looks like an RCMP cruiser and he changed vehicles. They claim that he changed vehicles and he, then he was in a silver SUV, a Chevrolet Tracker. And uh, this is another problem I have with this story. So how did he get the vehicle? You know, if he changed vehicles, how did he do that? Like, how did that happen? I don't understand. You know, did somebody put a vehicle there for him or I'm really wondering how did, how was he able to change vehicles? So he tor torched this um, one. And it's kind of interesting. There were two vehicles torched. I'm not sure what's going on with there were the two vehicles. I don't know. There's certain things I don't know what's going on here. And then yeah, he was supposedly take. They said he had. They had him in custody. At this, uh, it's like a truck stop or a gas station, and there's a restaurant. So he's kind of this gas station. It's supposed to be taken in custody, but then there's a body lying on the ground, and then. Um, um, Yeah, but then, okay, 
Yeah, they said he was taken in custody, but then they said, oh, he died. He died. Well, how convenient. So, you know, it's hard to get the story, uh, really know what happened when the shooter is killed. And so one of the RCMP officers, a woman, um, was killed in the rampage and another officer was injured and the, uh, the RCMP officer who was killed was a woman. So she's the martyr. She's the hero. So there always has to be a hero. So yeah, over 10, but actually, um, yeah, this is, uh, so constable Heidi Stevenson. So you see her picture all over the place. She's the martyr. She's the hero and she was killed. Um, if there's anything else here. Oh yeah, this is the spokeswoman here. And so they had images of her with kids and yeah. Okay. And this is, uh, these are the cops. They were like in military outfits to take out this one guy. So a lot of personnel involved here. Um, yeah, so still, the police are still bracing to discover more buddy, bodies. And so that's, so there are all these memorials and things going on. Um, anyway, that's it. Uh, so it's interesting, the story, the story, the details were very spotty at first. Um, <clears throat> um, so it was, uh, it didn't make any sense. He sounded like a nice guy. I've read a number of reports and they're asking who was this guy? And, and his death is being investigated by police watchdog. But what the RCMP, I think they investigate themselves. So it's kind of like self-regulation, you know, so you never get to the truth. If uh, the police are uh, investigating themselves, are they going to say, oh, <laughs> anything? And there was any wrongdoing in the case? No. Okay. So... Um, so they said some of the victims were known to him and the story that they've started to put together, well, he, he had this denture clinic in, in Dartmouth. Um, and, uh, he was from the area originally and he had been featured in, um, um, a story uh, on CTV, which is a big network in Canada. Um, so anyway, he was a collector of cars and motorbikes and he liked to, uh, buy old police cars at auction and fix them up. So that's the story about why he had, there were two police cruisers. Um, so, uh, so they're saying he's a friendly guy, but then now they're saying there's, um, he had some issues with his girlfriend, jealous, or uh, he was obsessed with her. And there's, they're saying now that he killed his girlfriend and her new boyfriend, but they haven't shown, I haven't seen any, what's weird is they're saying that, but I haven't seen any pictures of the girlfriend or wife and the new boyfriend. So things just don't add up. And, um, you know, the, his clients at the dental clinic uh, said he was very friendly and he got along with his girlfriend and they would joke around and they didn't see any problems. And yeah, he was featured in a CTV story in 2014 where he gave uh, free dentures to a cancer survivor who lost her teeth because of the uh, medication she had, they've been using on her. Um, so very nice guy, you know. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it seems like they're trying to put together a story about this guy who's just suddenly flipped out over his girlfriend. Um, 
I did read something that uh, maybe the police had had to go, go to his cottage when there was a party or something recently. I don't know. Um, yeah. Here, the, one of the clients said he got along fine with his uh, female partner. Yeah. But they've had to make up, you know, create this story. Well, you know, he had anger issues or he was possessive or whatever. Yeah. Um, and they're making a big deal. He was obsessed with, as a kid or something, I think he was thinking of uh, joining the RCMP. So he always had an interest in police. Uh, some more details here. Yeah. Um, this 14 hour reign of terror. Um, oh yeah, apparently first killing his ex and her new boyfriend, but have not seen any pictures of the ex and the boyfriend in any of these stories. Oh yeah, and they're saying he struggled with alcohol. The madman was a millionaire who struggled with alcohol. Um, so they, they're suggesting he kind of snapped, you know, because his girlfriend or wife was with the new boyfriend or something and, you know, his business had to be shut down because of the virus outbreak, you know, dental offices were ordered to shut down and only operate in emergencies. So I guess his business was um, closed. So it's just a story of, oh, he snapped. He just snapped and went on this murderous rampage. Um, so all these stories about the victims. Um, Uh, oh, yeah, so there's lots, like, he set his own house on fire. Oops. Damn it. Oh, they got Portman. They put a P instead of a W. That threw me off. Um, so he set fire to five. I don't know. They keep, I was saying he set fire, supposedly set fire to three houses and then two cars um but then they'll say five houses so i don't know uh five abodes and some vehicles as he murdered people in a 30 mile radius uh, and he set his own house on fire he carjacked several other vehicles in a bid to elude cops um okay i guess that they're claiming he carjacked i don't know some vehicles so he did switch vehicles. So I guess they're claiming he carjacked. Uh, so he was cornered at this gas station, supposedly, and he whipped out what is believed to have been Stevenson's gun. Oh, the oh, the Mounties gun. Okay, so he used the Mounties gun before being shot dead in a hail of police bullets. I saw one video where it was like four shots people heard or something. Um, Yeah, so, and so they're going to make, de make him look like a really bad guy now, even though it sounds like he was a really decent guy. Um, they're creating the story. Yeah, this is him as a kid. Um, and that's his business, his denture business. Um, yeah, they're just making him, trying to make him sound like he's really weird because he was interested in police uniforms or, and that's kind of suspicious. Like, oh, yeah, you know, this uh, dead Patsy, um, they are investigating. How did he get such uh, convincing looking uh, uniform? I haven't seen a picture of him in a uniform, but they're claiming he was wearing an RCMP uniform, I think, yeah, and in a police cruiser. Um, and yeah, so Patsy's usually, uh, RCMP, they will provide these things for Patsy's. Um, yeah, Nova Scotia mass murder, evil and calculated. So they were, they're claiming that he's planned this for months. But if you, if you plan this for months, like, you know, snap. Well, that's not just snapping like that. I don't know. Like, uh, mm -hmm. You know, men who have maybe have anger issues or issues with their girlfriend, whatever, they don't go.
go on these murderous rampages. I don't know. I don't think so. It'll just snap like that. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, murderous rampage. For, oh, he burned her car. Oh, here. Okay, so he got into a Mazda 3. Okay. He executed the RCMP officer at point blank range. Took her gun and mags, burned her car and took her car. Burned his car and took her car. Right, okay. Uh, so this constable, Chad Morrison, was uh, the one who was... Uh, I don't know. They said so the police challenged him at the gas station. So he went to the gas station to fill up, and the police arrived. And they challenged him, and he had the uh, RCMP officer's gun. Oh, it says he was hit with ten rounds. Well, I saw a video where they said they heard four rounds. So I don't know. Um. Yeah. Jealousy burned deep in Nova Scotia killer. So this is the story they got to, yeah, look at the outfits that the police were in. They look like they're in the military. Uh, yeah, they're still st telling this story about his ex-wife and new boyfriend. Well, who was this maniac? Who was this maniac? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is him, and I. there's a video of him. Yeah, there's a video of him. Yeah, this is him. So, uh, yeah, what's weird is his Facebook page, of course, has been scrubbed, and I saw a video of somebody, no images, he claimed, oh, he saw the Facebook page, and he was depressed, you know, and okay, but we never got to see that. He just... Never got to see that at all. So this is uh, Wartman with the bear. And he was featured. Um, yeah, so there are videos in here. There's the fire, the vehicle fire. Um, amateur video. Da, da, da. So this is sort of, I think there's, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. There is, yeah, this is him in an ad for his uh, denture clinic. Whoops. Hang on. Okay, so that's the, that's the car. Uh, yeah, this is him, and this is him in an ad for his business, and he was um, featured in that story. Oh, yeah, that's, so here he is featured in that story where he's making dentures for the cancer patient. So that's him just doing his doing his thing there making dentures that's him as a kid um and this is more information buzz um that's the fire the vehicle fire oh the other thing is this video it mentions i found this so there is this uh sort of a parody um website local frank magazine and so it had this article i guess from february this is an archive version i think because i think they're trying to remove things any mention of him online um they don't want people to talk they don't even want people to say his name i'm gonna say his name um gabriel gabriel wartman gabriel wartman so there's this article that was written. It's uh, Car 54, Where Are You? by Barney Fife. So it's sort of a satirical thing. But I think it's a reference to an actual incident in February where he had a run-in with the local police, the Halifax uh, HRP SWAT team. Oh, HRP, the Halifax Regional Police. So he has a private parking lot for his business, his denture business. And um, I think he has a problem with people parking in it to uh, use other businesses. So there were police that had, um, parked in his lot and he chained it off 
and then he got into a situation with <laughs> the local police. Um, yeah, so there are these images. And this lady's channel, she shows the images. They're kind of small on that archive page. Kind of small. Oops, what was that? Um, so he had, some, yeah, so I don't know. He had a problem with the police there. Um, yeah, she shows the images here. Um, I guess of the situation when the police, um, yeah, there's the chain. So I guess this is what happened here. Um, he had to unchain his parking lot for the police or something. Anyway, so lots of stories about him, but they're trying to definitely, he, he sounded like a decent guy. And now they had to create this story. Oh, he was um, jealous and killed his ex-wife, ex-girlfriend, whatever, but we don't see any picture of her or the boyfriend supposedly killed. I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, this is a report. This talks about, yeah, the images, yeah, the victims. So they have been showing images of the victims finally, didn't know who they were. There's the RCMP officer. This is another woman. So I think there are like at least 10, this family was wiped out supposedly. Uh, these women, this woman, uh, this couple, and uh, these are prison guards. This couple, they were supposedly murdered. Um, these are more victims. So I think they have at least 10 named here. So they've got some more details finally, but um, it just, it doesn't sound like a mass murderer at all, this Gabriel. He does not sound like a mass murderer, not to me. Um, this doesn't add up. I don't know. There's just too many holes in this story. And the fact that they don't even want you to talk about Gabriel Wartman. Um, you know, when there's a, the shooter is dead, it's like, you know, the story is kind of forgotten. They kind of, they dwell on the victims. Um, how do we know? I don't know what's going on. I just question this. So RCMP does not have a good history at all, so I'm really not sure about this. Uh, it sounds very suspicious, especially since they are really bound and determined to in, uh, impose even stricter gun control laws and in the shutdown and the scaremongering, the fear, the virus of fear, and this is just adds to the virus of fear, I think, when people are very vulnerable. Anyway, um, I guess that's it for now. Now, I will get back to some other things about uh, the demonization of China and this whole virus situation. There's so many things going on. I've been really overwhelmed. Anyway, that's it for now. Anyway, that's the story of the, the biggest mass uh, shooting in uh, modern Canadian history. So um, at least 19 people. Might, the toll, death toll might rise. I don't know. Um, I guess more details will come out, but I'm, I'm questioning this. I'm questioning this. It just sounds too much like a false flag attack um, to terrorize people again. Anyway, that's it for now. Um, thanks for listening, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.